Another thing that a man who's using you will do is take no interest in your sexual satisfaction. Now, let's talk about this. One, of course, this is assuming you have crossed this line or plan to cross this line with this man. As always, I am not telling you that you should be crossing that line, all right? I'm just acknowledging that many adults will have, all right? And we got to have discussions about this dynamic. So with that said, let me throw out there real quick that I, I do think there's a very huge disconnect between men and women and the understanding of how to truly please each other sexually and how they need to pour into each other, all right? So I am not speaking to the ignorance of the man. I'm not speaking to him lacking an understanding of what you specifically need. I'm speaking about the man who doesn't give a damn what it is. You could give him the blueprint and he would not care. If anything, he will come, up, come with every excuse in the book. Why? Well, you don't need that or I'm not doing this. And he is much more of a selfish lover. Now, here's something I can say confidently. When a man is really into you, when he's serious about a relationship with you, he at least has some level of consideration for wanting you to be satisfied in the bedroom. Now, here's something else I have to throw out there. Sometimes the lack of him taking more initiative and in making sure you're satisfied is due to you lying to him about being satisfied. So be very careful because if you engage with him sexually and you lead him to believe, as I like to say, he's king dingling in the bedroom when it's not really going down like that, you are setting you both up for failure because you have men who think, oh yeah, she's good. She's happy. And if he thinks you're good and you're satisfied, he doesn't see the need to go any further in trying to understand what more he could do for you. He thinks he's already on top of his game. And yes, sometimes some of you have led that man to believe that. So you've got to be open and transparent. Now, I understand it's, it's very difficult to criticize a man sexually. Um, I do think that if we want healthier and happier relationships, especially marriages, we've got to learn how to establish the ability to constructively criticize each other as early as possible in a relationship. We've got to get comfortable with telling each other, hey, let's, let's do this better, let's do more of this. Of course, criticizing in a more positive tone, not just lashing out, this is bad, this is sucks, I don't know, whatever, but just really with the desire to make things better for each other, okay? But regardless, you've got to be willing to be open about that. And, and here's the thing, it's you being open about that and, ex of course, expressing yourself in a positive, loving manner that will at least give you some insight to how, how considerate he is of how you're feeling, all right? So it's almost like, and I don't know why this is coming to mind, but let's just say you're sexually engaging with a man who gets way too rough for your liking, Okay. If you just try to suck it up, no pun intended, if you just try to suck it up and act like it's all good because you feel like, well, he likes it, so I don't want to like throw anything off for him. And I understand you're just like, I, I want to give you some points for trying to like, again, work with him. But at the same time, this is your chance to say, hey, you know, I, I don't like it that rough. Let, let's soften it up. And at that point, if he shows no willingness to change his style to accommodate your concerns, then there's nothing for me to believe. Either this man is using you and all he views you is views you as is a sexual outlet uh, and, and a person he gains whatever benefits from, or he is not mature enough and healthy enough to be in a relationship right now. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Relationships are the key to a successful life, but there's five areas that we have to be mindful of when it comes to relationships. There's relationship with God, 
relationship with ourselves, relationship with family and friends,